I guys uh, I guys I will be discussing the concept of mutation and mutagenesis I'm sure you're all familiar with the movie X-Men now um, mutation is basically what is said to confer those um, supernatural powers that they add but that's fiction now let's discuss reality what is mutation what is mutagenesis so basically in our first um, um, topic we discuss the structure of DNA and how uh, the DNA is being used to synthesize uh, mRNA and then proteins so basically this structure of DNA actually creates some problems because it is extremely long that means that it is fragile that means that you have things that can happen to it and actually disrupt it you know it is also subject to both physical and chemical damage uh, the consequences of such um, damages can also be lethal for the organism or for the, the, the offspring. So what is mutation? Mutation is a irritable change in the base sequence of DNA. So you have the sequence of DNA, the A, T, G, C, adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine sequences and then you now have changes in those sequences now those changes could be substitutions could be insertions could be deletions could be duplications uh, so it's basically a change in the base sequence of the DNA that is irritable that can be passed on to a progenitor cell so what are the reasons for mutation how do they happen so basically uh, mutation can occur in two ways it can be spontaneous or can be induced can be spontaneous when we mean by it's not actually caused by any external agent or any external influence actually arises from the normal metabolism of cells so you have errors in DNA replication which is normal and from here you can see that um, spontaneous errors in DNA replication is rare so basically you have one error per 10 raised power 10 base in Escherichia coli and so the second reason is that it can be a consequence of the damaging effects of physical or chemical mutagens on DNA and we'll see that as we uh, go along. So what are the types of mutations? Mutations can be of two types. You can have mutations at the gene level and you can have mutations at the chromosomal level. So basically you can have breaks in chromosomes. You can have point mutations in, gene, in genes and all that. So basically mutations can happen at two 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 points can happen at the gene level and at the chromosomal level so what are the types of mutations that can happen you have point mutations point mutations are where you have a change in a single base position so let's say for example that you have a sequence of a t t g now if you have just a change in one base position say the second time in ATTG the second time in there you have a change in that single base position you call you call that kind of mutation a point mutation and that mutation can be by insertion can be deletions can be substitutions or can actually cause a frame shift now what we mean by insertion is that you have an insertion of another base in there and so you are changing the way the information there is being read you also have a deletion where you can have a loss of a single base you know i gave a sequence already attg now if you lose the second base in that sequence which is type mine that means you only have atg you don't expect that you are going to get the the the, 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 the same um product like you had before you can already shift the frame you can have a substitution from my amino acid with another one in fact you can even have a truncation of that protein and so it becomes shorter the amino acid uh, becomes shorter at that point in time you can also have substitutions substitutions can be of two types it can be transitions or it can be transversions now transitions where you have a purine or a pyrimidine is replaced by the other so in this case we are saying that a purine can be replaced by a purine or a pyrimidine is replaced by a pyrimidine so that's what you call by transitions or you have transversion where a purine is being replaced by a pyrimidine or vice versa so you have an example where a or t is being 
uh, replaced by cytosine. You know, you can see that A and T and P, uh, they are there. A to T or C, A is a purine and it's been replaced by thymine or cytosine, which is a pyrimidine. And then um, you can also have mutations where you are shifting the frame, you are shifting the way the information was being read before from the original sequence. So what are the consequences of mutations? What, 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 what are the effects that mutations can have? Mutations can be silent. Now, when you mean silent is that when you have a change in, 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 in basis, in those single base positions, um, there is no amino acid sequence. You can remember that in our first topic, we discussed the genetic code, where we told you that information is being read in triplets of code called the codons. Now, these codons, you have an amino acid can be coded for by multiple codons. And so, in this case, if you have a substitution or a change in a, in a base sequence, in a base, in the sequence, it can actually be changing the amino acid to the codon that is coding for the same amino acid, which means that you don't have an amino acid chain. And so you expect that there will be no phenotypic effect to this. You can also have neutral mutations where base changes result in amino acid change that does not affect protein function. Now you can see an example here is showing that uh, aspartic acid could be changed to glutamic acid. But because they, are, they have similar properties, it does not really affect the protein function. You can also have missense mutation, mutation whereby you have a change in codon that is now specifying a new amino acid with a different chemical property and then of course the function of that protein will be affected. Now let's say that we have uh, amino acid lysine at the position there. You now have that mutation that is changing lysine at that position to glutamic acid or is changing it to or to another amino acid. That means that you are changing the protein by itself. The protein may not function well, will not want function well, the protein may not be highly, the gene uh, may not be highly expressed and all that. So basically here, the function is affected. Then you also have nonsense mutation, where the base pair substitution results in a stop codon, whereby you are truncating the, the, the amino acid sequence, and so you're having a shorter polypeptide, and so that means that you're not having the original protein that is supposed to have been produced. So those are the consequences of mutations that, that you can see that happen. So, uh, I'm just going to show you um, the uh, examples, just show you so that you can understand better. Uh, so basically, this is, these are base substitutions, these are point mutations. Now, this is um, the original sequence here. Um, this is silent mutation where methyl, you can see the, the amino acid sequence is methionine, lysine, phenylalanine, glycine. Now, you are still having the same sequence the same yes there is some substitution in there but it has not changed the, the the amino acid sequence so the mutation there is silent now you can have a missense mutation whereby as you can see from here uh, the sequence has changed it has changed glycine to serine which is another amino acid and so that's a missense mutation with a phenotypic effect then you can also have nonsense mutation whereby uh um, the, 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 the mutation actually causes it to change to a stop codon and so you're having a shorter protein and then you can also have a run-on mutation whereby you can have mutations in the stop codon which is now changing it to another amino acid that means that the, the information will continually be read and that's why you call that uh, run-on mutation so these are, these are examples of insertions and deletions uh, uh, you can see this uh, what this is the big cat at the rat now if you look at her you're going to see that um, there's an insertion of a B a letter B between this cat here so which means that you have changed the way the information is being read now so if you wanted to pronounce this now what you are going to say is that the big CB AT the big C bat at the rat 
you're changing the way the information is being read but in this case because this information is being read three three bases at a time so the information is being read like d big c b a t a t e t h e r a and then this t becomes isolated so basically you can see uh, the, the the likely effect of this mutation and that's what you call a frame shift mutation where you're shifting the way the information is being and then so what is mutagenesis this is just a pro process of mutation and a mutagen is anything that can promote or cause mutations and these mutagens can be physical or now what are these um, mutations what can they be it can be an incorrect base pairing due to tautomeric shifts it can be a removal of nitrogenous bases it can be a deamination of nitrogenous bases whereby there is a loss of the amino group it can be an additional deletion of nucleotide it can actually be breaks where you can have single stranded breaks or double stranded breaks in dna and it can also be cross-linking where you have a covalent linkage so what is a um, spontaneous mutation and induced mutation? What are the examples? So the mutagens that I have just discussed, you can have physical mutagens and you can have chemical mutagens. Physical mutagens like non-ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation, you have UV light, ultraviolet light, and then X-rays and gamma rays. And then chemical mutagens, you have alkylating agents that add methyl groups to bases and then alters the base and changes the way it has its property. You can also have deaminating agents like nitrous acid that deaminates cytosine to uracil, resulting in a DC combination to an adenine uracil combination. You have hydroxylating agents, you have base analogs, which are uh, chemical substances that mimic actual bases, and then you also have intercalating agents. So, this is just um, showing you what deamination is about. You have cytosine is changing to uracil which now bond pairs with um, adenine. You also have adenine being changed to apoxanthine, which now bonds with... So basically, these damages, these mutations, the ones that can be repaired, not everything can be repaired. The ones that can be repaired actually can be repaired by innate repair mechanisms that are already built into the physiology of the cell. So you have different mechanisms such as direct reversal of damage, base excision repair, mismatch repair, nucleotide excision repair, homologous recombination repair, and non-homologous enjoining. These two are basically uh, used for repairing double-stranded bricks in DNA. And then you have translation synthesis, which really is not a repair mechanism. It's just some kind of joining and it's less accurate. So basically, these are the kind of DNA repair mechanisms that you find in cells. However, when cells cannot repair the damage, the cells also has a way of taking care of that damage. This, the, the, the cell that can signal the cell to say, look, go into senescence, do apoptosis, die off. Or if the body, if, if that cannot be done, that can then lead to cancer, diseases like cancer, where you have an accumulation of these mutations and and. and this can, of course, cause a, 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 a very debilitating um, disease. So basically, this is what um, we have discussed in this um, topic of mutation and mutagenesis. So in summary, we're telling you, I am telling you, that mutation is a change in the DNA sequence. I'm telling you that um, these mutations can be point mutations, can be uh, gene mutations, can be chromosomal mutations. So basically, I, 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 I want to believe that you've understood how, uh, what, we've, um, um, what we've discussed here. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll meet you uh, in the next